this gospel, Jesus is making it very clear that even though he was born in Bethlehem, even though he came from Nazareth and was fully human, nevertheless he did not have a human origin. You see, God the Father is the God above in the Old Testament. Jesus, Emmanuel, means God is with us. He gave God a human face. And the Holy Spirit is God within us. Now, whenever we begin a novena, or particularly when we begin the Simbanga B, we have certain expectations. That if I stick with this Simbanga B all the way through to the end and don't miss a day, then I should have the expectation of something from God. Perhaps an answered prayer about my health, my family, about my finances, about my future. Any number of prayers that we would offer to God, we would kind of expect that he would answer them the way we want them answered. But there are four ways, basically, in which God answers prayer. When what you ask for is not right, God says no. When you are not right, God says grow. When the timing of your prayer is not right, God says slow. And when everything is right, God says go and answers the prayer exactly the way that you offered it. Now I'm going to zero in for this meditation just in this first one. What what you ask for is not right, God says no. He loves you enough to say no. Think about it. Sometimes the most loving thing a parent can say to their teenage daughter, for example, when they ask if they can go to a party with their friends, mom might ask, are there going to be boys at that party? I don't know. I think so. Are the parents going to be at that party? I'm not sure. No, then you can't go. Now, the teenager is going to be very upset because all her friends are going, but mom and dad is able to perhaps see consequences that their daughter cannot see. And so the most loving thing they could say to her, knowing that there's consequences, is no, you can't go. Let me give you an example. When I was maybe, oh, about 38 years old, my father was 76, and he was in the intensive care unit. He was in a coma. His kidneys were completely shut down. And so they were going to have to take the ventilator out to see if he could breathe on his own. But if he didn't, he would die. And I remember my prayer as I gave him the sacrament of the sick. My prayer is that he would die painlessly and peacefully. But God said no. As a matter of fact, three hours later, he woke up. And he seemed okay. So much so that the next day they took him out of intensive care, put him in a regular room, and we were all visiting him, and the doctor came in shaking his head. He said, Father, we can't understand it. Your father, his kidneys were dead, but now they're working perfectly, and his blood work is absolutely normal. A miracle. God said no to my prayer and said yes to what my father really enjoyed getting, a miracle. God said no again. When my father was 82, he was diagnosed with lung cancer, and the lung cancer was terminal. And so I gave him the sacrament of the sick again, and I remember my prayer. My prayer was that he would have a miracle again, that he would be healed completely of his lung cancer. And God said, no. And my father died. So people would say, well, God answered your prayer when your father was 76, but not when he was 82. I said, oh, no. He answered my prayer both times by saying no. And by saying no to me, when my father had lung cancer, he was saying yes to my father and was giving him the greatest gift he could possibly give him. He gave him the gift of eternal life, the reason for which he did all the healings in the New Testament. 
And what I learned from that is that all miracles, no matter how dramatic, are temporary. And so, when you pray during Simbanga B, and you're praying for what you need and for what you want and hoping our Lord will give that to you, remember the three T's. Talk it over. At every Simbanga B, open up your heart completely. Don't hold anything back, even tears. Talk it over. But then turn it over because you really don't have control over how God will answer your prayer. And finally, the most difficult your prayer you'll ever say and really mean it and don't take it back, each day of Simbanga B, I trust you, Lord. And when you trust our Lord, you're following Him because He created the precedent of the three T's. He talked it over. Father, if this cup can pass from me, in other words, could we do this another way? Then he turned it over. Not my will, but yours be done. And finally, into your hands I commend my spirit, another way of saying, I trust you, Heavenly Father. And so we pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin this Simbanga B, give us the grace to trust you completely, that you always have our well-being in mind, that you always have our salvation in mind when you answer our prayers. And help us during this Simbanga B, as we turn everything over to you and open our heart to you, that we completely trust you. And so as Advent begins, let us begin again.